the Greater Lagos Region, and I'm your host, Love Ikuku Oyedoku. A cursory look at some of the successes recorded by Governor Babajide Sawundu in the last three years shows that the state has made remarkable progress across all sectors of the economy. Within three years, Governor Babajide Sawundu has commissioned 1,097 school infrastructure projects covering 970 schools across the 20 local governments and 37 local council development areas. The governor has also touched the agricultural sector. The Imoto rice mill said to be among the largest in the world and largest in sub-Saharan Africa upon completion is expected to be producing 2.5 million bags of 50 kg rice annually, creating more than 250,000 jobs. The Sawonlu administration has seen the completion and commissioning of roads across the state. The health sector is not left out through the Medical Project Implementation Unit, NPIU, Governor Sawulu kick-started a total upgrade of infrastructure in the state-owned primary, secondary, and tertiary healthcare facilities. The administration has also completed and commissioned numerous new road projects across the three senatorial districts, even completed the ones he inherited from the last administration, and still counting. This is the Greater Lagos Vision, and I'm your host once again, Love Kuku Oyedoku. Welcome. This episode features Lekki Ekwe Expressway. We feel your pain. Lagos State Government tells residents appeals over ongoing reconstruction. Parking levy designed to eliminate indiscriminate levy collection, says Lagos State Government. Transportation, Lagos Government introduces cash reward to lag ferry users, says waterways now safe. These and many more when we return. Please stay with us. The Lagos State Government says it feels the pains of residents of Lekki, Ekbe, and has appealed to residents and road users over all inconveniences the reconstruction of the ongoing 18.7 kilometer Lekki Ekbe Expressway may have caused. Engineer Aramide Adioyi, Special Advisor Works and Infrastructure to Governor Sawonlu, stated this in a chat with newsmen. Engineer Adioyi noted that the Sawonlu government is a responsive government that wants the best for the citizens. The loss of man hours is regrettable, um, and we're trying to minimize that. Even school children for school children, because it doesn't make sense for them to go spend hours in traffic before they get to school. It makes them very, very... Um, unproductive even by the time they get to school, the learning capabilities will do. do. So we recognize that. And so for this operation in the next phase two, because it's strategic, you have a lot of schools around that area, the contractor will see the work methodology that we will put in place to ensure that the contractor can possibly work, maybe possibly in the night, ensure that the diversions are done in a way and manner that can actually minimize the pain and hardship that they're going through. But it's regrettable, uh, but as a government, uh, it's not as if we don't feel the pain. And so we, we sincerely apologize and regret all of those um, pains that they're going through right now. But um, it's a thing that will soon fade, fade away once we move in and the contractor stabilizes and people can ride on that stabilized surface. She, however, attributed the cause of the gridlock now experienced in the area to a behavioral pattern of people who disobey traffic laws. But in all of this, one major point of note is the fact that the way people behave, when people will not cease to, f if they continue to face one way, because the officials of LASMA, everybody was there. Even LASMA, all of the things that LASMA needed to do to rejig, to ensure that they would double their personnel, their resources, work in, tr in triple shifts, everything they needed to do had been put in place, even for, the, for their men to be able to up their game. But that subsided for like a month, and you saw people go back to their old ways of facing one way. So it's about the enforcement. When you are having construction work going on, government feels the pain. It doesn't make sense for people to go waste man hours. We do, and that's why we are reconstructing the road. But there is no pain without gain. Road, it's, it's a methodical job because we've done the phase one. We've done 18 kilometers, and we succeeded at it. The next 16 kilometers should not be a problem. When people decide to be lane disciplined, stay in lane, 
obey diversion signs, and allow the contractor to work. So it's not as if government does not need to be stamped to, to know what they ought to do. We have already taken practice steps. Traveling on Lagos Ferry will now attract cash reward, so says the Lagos State Government. This comes as the government announced that its waterways are now safe. Lagos remains one of the busiest cities in Nigeria. It's home to over 500 active startups with a massive consumer market. Commuting within a state densely populated as Lagos has been Herculean in spite of alternative means such as water transportation. All that is about to change now with a reward system in place. Log ferry users are now to receive cash rewards when they use the waterways. My two, Ijegun Ekba, Ebuti Ojo, Madagri, Ekbe, Ibejuleki. Anywhere you are in Lagos, CMS, Ibuti Ero, Apapa, anywhere you are in Lagos and you are patronizing Lagos State Ferry Services. Once you spend 5,000 Naira worth of money, no matter the trip, if it's one way or two ways or three ways or whatever, your 5,000 Naira qualifies you for a full token. And instantly, instantly, you will be entered into a draw that can make you win either 500,000, 1 million, 3 million, 50 million, 100 million. So every 5,000 euro spent qualifies you for this draw and for a good to hit. The core values of the initiative is said to create responsive paths to meet the needs of Lagosians. I'm sure you know what uh, gaming and betting is all about. I'm sure you know. Because it's like uh, every weekend, your, the draw is, is being done transparently everywhere. So, if you win, you know you are qualified for what you have won, but you have to win. You know what I mean? So, I wish you all the best. The more you buy, the more chances that you will win. So, once again, I say buy in Lagos, win in Lagos. You must buy. You must buy before you can enter the draw. And like I said... It is just the right time that government seems to, you know, want to lean, you know, towards the buyers because they make things happen in Lagos. In Lagos, things happen. People come there. There is one uh, Igbo man that said, if you come with, uh, what do you call it? Is it Ghana must go or whatever? To Lagos, you go back with Jeep, isn't it? Because this is Lagos where everything happens. So, and if you've been doing business and you've been making it and you've been growing, we as government seems to be of the opinion that you need to say thank you back to people that are making it happen. And that's why this reward system is being encouraged. So, if you have all uh, the uh, nalai nalai, nalai nalai, you know, they get anything, oh. you have to be part of it before you know it's not true, not true. Eco talking is not true, not true. Thank you very much. It is very clear. It has nothing to do with legal tender. What we're talking about here is that you spend for your satisfaction and getting value for money, and at the same time, you are getting reward. We're not talking about using it as a means of payment. It's you spend and you get value for your money and reward as well. Also, you talked about trust. It should be seen here that because there's transparency, that is why the Lagos State Consumer Protection is invited here. So wherever you believe or you think that your consumer rights has been breached, definitely you can approach us. As a consumer, you, you use this token and you believe that you, you've used up to 5,000 Naira on record and you expect to, be, to qualify for the, for the draws and the token. So definitely, if you think there's something wishy-washy, 
you can as well approach us. That is transparency. In an effort to raise the standards for safety measures, the government is set to establish a command and control center to monitor activities on the waterways. Since the introduction of Lag Ferry into the waterways, um, we've had significant development of our waterways because the main reason of bringing Lag Ferry in is to be able to set the standards for the kind of boats we want to see on our waterways. Um, and in terms of the safety that was spoken about, there's been so many things done and which has helped improve safety on the waterways. The first thing the state government was able to do was employ more officers to be able to cover, you know, all of the jetties and the terminals. So we increased the workforce of the safety officers, which helped us be able to monitor effectively on the waterways. Secondly, we are also able to increase our patrol um, of the waterways as well, as well as upgrade our search and rescue units. Um, thirdly, we're able to also ensure now that, you know, it's much easier to be able to access even petrol, um, buying petrol on the water. As I speak to you, Falomo was the first one, as that today, Ijego, Egba, and Ikorodu also have four dumps which helps eradicate the use of just buying fuel, um, just um, um, using kegs to buy fuel on our waterways. And we're not stopping there. The state government as well is about to commission the first of its kind in West Africa, a command and a control center. The whole idea of that command and control center is to be able to effectively monitor all of the activities going on on the waterways in terms of safety, in terms of security, and of course, gather data for the government to be able to make informed decisions. And this will also help us be able to respond to emergencies even much quicker. Um, yes, we know there were unfortunate incidents in the recent time, but prior to those two incidents, which were back to back for nine months, we didn't have any incidents on our water, which is the first of its kind. And also thanks to the fact that, look, we have Lag Ferry setting the standard, leading the role, but of course, there's still other operators as well. And as regulators, we want to ensure that safety is very, very important. Like I said, safety would in encourage more people to use the waterways. All eyes, especially travelers and waters, are looking forward to the impact of the project. The Lagos State Governor, Babajide Somulu, has said that his administration will continue to prioritize the development of education sector in the state through increase in the education budget. The governor mentioned this at the opening day of our two-day 2022 Lagos State Education Summit. These are stakeholders from the education sector drawn from across all strata of the nation. They are here locking horns on how to evolve a fit for purpose education model for the state. Governor Sawonlu, who joined via Zoom from Abuja, but was represented physically by the secretary to the state government, Falasha de Jaji, said that improved education is one of the legacies he wishes to leave behind by the time he leaves office. Education for us is a must for us. It's one of the major, major um, dividends of democracy. It's one of the cardinal objectives of any government that, that is worth its, its, its work. And so for us, we see education as one of the things, one of the tools that can end poverty in our system. We see education as one of the legacies that we can bequeath you know, to generations coming behind us. And so we're, we're not paying lip service to education. We're taking it very, very, very seriously. And it's one of the major, 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 major um, pillars that we believe that will be judged at the end of our time in government. There are lots of big, big, big initiatives and ideas that we've actually been propelling, that have been pushing our ideology in the last three, three and a half years. Um, education happens to be, on year on year, one of the only few sectors that has continued to receive an increment in budgetary allocation, both at the capital expenditure and also with the recurrent expenditure. On her part, the Commissioner for Education, Fulasha De Adefisayo, said Nigeria has a lot to do in improving the education sector and that the summit was organized to find solutions to the problems facing the sector in the country. So this is about audacity. It's not another talk show. Nigeria has a lot, we have a lot of problems. Yes, Nigeria has the largest number of out-of-school children in the world. 
among other unfavorable key performance indicators of education. We have a lot of work to do. And therefore, the Lagos State Education Summit is important because some of the outcomes of this summit, we hope, will contribute to the process of framing the solutions to the well-known problems in the sector. Lagos State has the platform and the capacity to contribute to education in Nigeria. That is why we are here. This 30-year development plan will provide the bandwidth to drive the themes agenda of this administration, of which technology and education are recognized as part of the pillars. In the words of the governor again, at the official announcement of the plan, he said, the dimensions to this plan are to keep a thriving economy that will make Lagos a robust, healthy, and growing economy with adequate jobs and strategic investments to sustain growth. The governor further said, we are building a human-centric city in which every Lagosian will have access to affordable and world-class education, healthcare, and social services. Stakeholders believe that creating a sustainable fit for purpose education model calls for a reworking of the current system being operated. Your content will reflect your, uh, your socioeconomic you know, affinity. Uh, the teachers must be able to be globally competitive in terms of uh, you know, what is required of them you know, globally. These are some of the things fit for purpose education is designed to do. We have to look at quality of our education. One key thing we need to solve is the quality of our teachers. We cannot improve education outcomes in Nigeria if we don't improve the quality of our teachers. And to do that, it goes beyond training 5,000 teachers, 10,000 teachers. We must come up with a model that can train millions of teachers on a yearly basis based on incentives. Those are the kind of things we need to rethink. Those are hard questions we need to ask ourselves. The Vice Chancellor of Pan Atlantic University, Nigeria, Professor Enase Okonedu, in her lecture, lamented a decay in the education sector, noting that the knowledge based system that Nigeria now practices is no longer appropriate. Okonedu urged stakeholders to see education as an investment that can make the youth thrive in an ever changing world. <music> The Lagos State Government has refuted false alarms over parking levy by its agency, the Lagos State Parking Authority, LASPA, saying that the development was designed to eliminate indiscriminate levy collections. The Lagos State Commissioner for Transportation, Dr. Frederick Oladende, at a press briefing on the activities of the newly created agency, LASPA, said against the erroneous claims by certain individuals and groups, LASPA has the power by law to collect parking levies. This press conference is to put the record straight on a purported viral post on social media by a business owner on demand notice by Lagos State Parking Authority, LASPA, charging him to pay the sum of 290,000 Naira for parking in his compound. But the Lagos State government says it's all false. The Lagos State Parking Authority, LASPA, according to the Commissioner for Transportation, Frederick Oladendi, says any setback not in the title of a property belongs to the government except whoever is claiming ownership proves otherwise. He said the idea that informed the creation of LASPA was to put an end to impediments arising from indiscriminate parking and collection of levies. For example, you build a supermarket. Uh, the supermarket would have the space that is allocated to it and then the supermarket would have a fence around it. Now, the distance between the fence, because we believe that that fence is put, um, I mean, they put it at the limit, and the distance between that fence and the drainage, which we know is not allocated to anybody, is actually the setback. It's important that we understand the definition of a setback. That setback belongs to government. Now, if the supermarket actually wants additional uh, parking space is welcome to, I mean, they're welcome to visit um, the agency and then pay for that um, parking space. For State Commissioner for Information and Strategy, Binga Omotosho said the claims were an attempt to malign the government by mischievous people. I've uh, read the newspapers and I've seen on uh, 
television, uh, people who don't know anything about law at all, uh, raising their hands and hitting the gear in anger to say that uh, what the state government has done is uh, wrong. And they are basing this on false information that if you pack a car within your compound, you are supposed to pay. I think uh, this is uh, the fallacy of the year. It's not true, and it's uh, an attempt to malign the government uh, by mischievous people. But I know that members of the media, uh, my colleagues, will not be surprised if you see such uh, things because we are in the season of politics. For general manager Laspa ADBC Adelabu, and joins developers and builders to accommodate park provisions in their building plans before construction. You cannot charge two million, three million, up to four million for a venue, and there's no parking. In Lagos today, there are some events centers that have 10 cars, 20 cars parking, and you have seated as venues for 1,000 people, 500 people. We feel as a government that that's very unfair because the day we have that event there, that whole area is unlocked. Lockdown. People can't get in, can't get out. You have to project an hour or two to get around. These are some of the reasons why the government decided something needed to be done about that. The Commissioner for Transportation, Frederick Oladendi, enjoined Lagosians to cooperate with the agency and other similar stakeholders in carrying out its mandate. Olade Inde also employed interested and concerned members of the public to visit the agency's office for necessary information and assistance. The Lagos State Government, alongside the French government, has signed a memorandum of understanding MOU, enabling professional esports players in Lagos to go on real time online community and compete with players around the world in the 1 billion e-sports industry. The MOU was signed between Governor Babajide Sawonlu and the French ambassador to Nigeria, Mrs. Emmanuel Blatman. In the agreement, the French partners would deliver high-grade online video gaming infrastructure that would afford players in Lagos to switch from being casual participants to competitive players in your game of choice across online leagues. According to Sawunlu, the MOU would be unlocking opportunities for the youths. So for us, it's really to ensure that we can create that ambience, that space where our youth, you know, are very smart, intelligent, you know, um, um, youth and, and smart kids in this place can take this opportunity of, you know, deepening, you know, the understanding of the games, you know, and deepening their learning. The learning, you know, that will be coming out of it is like STEM education in itself, you know, um, technology, you know, innovation, creativity, right, are the kind of things that we're going to be seeing, you know, apart from the latter part of it, which is the entertainment part but there's a deep-rooted learning skill. Of our partnership will propel the engagements we are taking today to empower the Nigerian esports ecosystem and beyond the Nigerian roof, youth. With world known uh, expertise, a turnover amounted to 50 million euros just in 2019, and with a, since then, a 480% increase in investments, and several major annual international meetings, the French market is ready for synergies to be built with its Nigerian counterpart. That's all we have for you in this episode of the Greater Lagos Vision on Plus TV Africa. I'm Lovikuku Oyedoku. Bye-bye now.